you think about it, Superman is like the embodiment of everything the left detests. He's extremely masculine. He's strong. He's self-reliant. He is a white heterosexual Protestant, which, you know, they can't stand that either. And he's basically universally beloved on both sides of the aisle. And, I mean, he just embodies all of that spirit of, of do it yourself and don't wait on the government and trust people and, um, you know, you do things for others. And, and on top of that, he's a very overtly messianic figure. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Now you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. DC actually launched a new series called Superman Son of Kal-El. Now this is also, also an alternate version of Superman. He is Superman's son by him and Lois Lane. They launched this new series, and the new Superman is gay. That's what they revealed a couple of weeks ago, where they had him, uh, they, they basically had a love interest for him that is a reporter for the Daily Planet. Really thinking outside the box there, guys. Uh, really, really paving some new ground. Uh, <laughs> they couldn't have come up with a different occupation for the the love interest of new Superman. But anyway, so they've done this and they actually just a few weeks ago did exactly the same thing. They retconned a character into being gay. That uh, th This character is a new character, but they retconned Tim Drake, who has been one of the Robins. He's actually the third Robin from, I don't know, maybe the 70s, I think. Been around for a long time, 70s or 80s at least. And so they retconned a classic character and uh, said that he was gay. And just like I said about that one, all this is is a dumb publicity stunt. All they're trying to do is check off the woke, you know, woke bingo, I guess it is, to make sure that they're fitting in and, and have popular characters that are now identified as being part of this. And I really loved how in the comment section there were so many people who were like, well, it's fine. To, it, it's great to finally get some recognition in comic books for the LGBTQ community because we're so under, uh, underrepresented. I'm like, yeah. Anyone that could say that is revealing that they have no idea about anything when it comes to comic books because if anything, gay people are wildly overrepresented <laughs> in comic books. They make up like 2% of the population and you can't find a comic book series nowadays that hasn't have, doesn't have at least one, if not multiple, gay or bi or trans characters in it. And so it's part of the reason that I haven't really bought many comic books that were written after 2010 because they just became liberal propaganda pieces and they're not even about the story anymore, which we'll get to here in a second. But it's, it's just obvious that what's going on here is these things are not written for the fans anymore. Let me give you an example here. We all know that when it comes to movies, there is a certain class of movie that is made specifically to make money. Your Star Wars, your Marvel movies, your Indiana Joneses, you know, your big blockbuster type movies. There's movies that are made for the audiences to try to get as many eyes on that as possible, to get as many people to spend money on this movie as possible. And it's not limited to those. Those are just the action movies that I like. But, you know, comedies, horror rom-coms, all of these things, these are commonly known to be big money makers for Hollywood. And because of that, Hollywood tends to make these stories and these characters that sort of revolve around the values that most Americans find palatable for use in a story, because storytelling is inherently a conservative uh, proposition, because if you are reflecting good values, which is a conservative position, then you're going to have a good story. I could go through each of these as examples, but that's beyond the scope of what we're talking about today. But the point is, that's the kind of movies that get made for the audience. And then there's another class of movies that are really only made to win Academy Awards because like 10 people see them, no one likes them, except for the people that vote for the Oscars. And then you have, you know, what was that movie that won a couple of years ago, Moonlight, which, you know, didn't even come close to commercial success and yet one movie of the year because it's about a gay black person and it basically checked off all of the, the woke things on the checklist on woke bingo 
uh, it got all of the the rows on woke bingo and so because of that the academy felt that they had to make that one movie of the year because it fit all of their values and so you have two, two different kind of movies movies that are made with our values done for the general public and movies that are made for a select few pretentious snobs in hollywood that rate movies and thus give those movies awards and this is the same thing that's going on with comics they know that this is not going to sell comic books they know that this is not going to appeal to mass audiences and by the way comic book readers as a general rule are pretty liberal I'm kind of an outlier in that I'm a conservative comic book nerd. A lot of people that are into that kind of thing tend to be very liberal. But the thing is, there are tons of gay comic book characters, and those comics tend to not sell very well. Oh, they might sell some novelty issues here and there, but at the end of the day, they just don't turn enough profit to keep them going long term. And that's because even people that are okay with homosexuality, even people that would cheer this on and think that it's a good thing that there's representation, they might like it in the sense that it makes them feel good that that's going on, but not enough for them to actually read it. Because the thing is, it's hard for even those people to relate to a guy that is attracted to another guy. That's something that is foreign to them, even if they think there's nothing morally wrong with it. They still don't really want to read about a story about that at the end of the day, and they're not really willing to spend money on it because it's not something that they can personally relate to. And this has been proven over and over and over again. There's been gay characters in comics since the 80s, since before I was even born. And those characters tend to just not be very popular. They know that this is not going to make money. They know that there's not a large public outcry for this. They just want their woke friends in New York City to come by, pat them on the back, and talk about how brave and beautiful they are for putting this forward. And then everybody will forget about it two seconds later. And that's why I'm not really that upset about it. I mean, I do hate the fact that they're trying to co-opt these characters and trying to ruin them. But at the end of the day, I mean, I would just rather them write better stories. But at the end of the day, this isn't really going to affect all that much. Because these comic books that they're writing are going to go by the wayside. Nobody's going to buy them. And then they'll go back to writing classic uh, classic comic book Superman, who you know, has a crush on Lois Lane and winds up chasing after her and Wonder Woman and and several other female characters within the DC universe because that's what people actually want. This is the the next thing that they've done. In the article directly following the announcement that he's gay, Superman is making a big fight against climate change. Yeah, that's, that's a real panel from the comic book. Superman is there protesting the climate The whole point of a comic book is that it's a visual medium. It is a way to tell stories in book form to still have some visually stimulating assistance with that. Something that's really cool, that the artwork is is just part and parcel of what a comic book is. And and I was just sitting back thinking, yeah, because why would you want to see somebody, you know, punch something in a superhero action comic, who, by the way, the original comic book to debut Superman was literally called Action Comic, when you could watch someone stand around holding a picket sign and protesting. (laughs) I mean, if that's not proof that they know this thing isn't going to make money, they know they're not actually going to try to turn profit with this thing, that it's just a a dumb publicity stunt, so everybody in New York will, will give them a high five on this, that's proof of it right there. Like, they're literally making a comic book where you're watching somebody protest as opposed to, like, you know, punching Doomsday or something like that. (laughs) They know it's dumb, and they know it's not going to make money. (laughs) And, I mean, that really does prove it. I will say, one of the good things that came out of this, and this is not a conservative person or a conservative publication, but they did point out the stupidity of it. I really like this headline from Gizmodo, which I think captures the ridiculousness of Superman fighting climate change. DC Comics think Superman's best climate action is protest, not literally his frozen breath. I mean, the, the guy does have ice breath. You would think that if global warming was a problem, he'd just, you know, open up his lungs, blow into the atmosphere. Problem solved. We can all go home now. It's as though the people that are writing these comics have no appreciation for their fans, no appreciation for their legacy or the the persona that these characters have evoked for decades of fanship now there's just no respect for tradition, none of that. Because to them, the political message is more important than entertaining and more important than the fans. 
And that's why they're not going to make profit off it. And they're not going to have fans, generations of fans that remember, oh, you remember that that really cool comic book, the one where Superman was outside with a picket sign protesting? Boy, that was that was really fun to read. He really does hit the nail on the head, and that's why I actually really respect this colorist, because it wasn't just a, a random angry rant. He actually hits at the core of the problem in this next statement that he makes, where he says, what really ticked me off was saying truth, justice, and a better world. It was truth, justice, and the American way, said El Tabe. And that really is at the core of it. Not just the saying itself, but that they despise everything that Superman stands for. The reason that Superman's slogan was truth, justice, and the American way is because the guy, the character, is an American icon. He embodies everything that is American and heroic and noble, and they don't think that America is a noble country. They don't think that America is heroic. They don't think it's a very good place to live at all. And so the fact that Superman is like the personification of all of that, they just detest that. Because you think about who Superman is. He is, at his core, a kid from out in the country, raised on the farm, who comes to the big city and makes a name of himself, a uh, name for himself, both in the heroic field as Superman, but also in the professional field as Clark Kent, and finds a, a person to fall in love with and marries her, and depending on what version of the story you're reading, starts a family. Like I said, there's some different versions where they can't have kids, but the point is, basically, he's living out American values. That's who this person is. And even more so than that, when representing Americanism, this is a private citizen who has absolutely nothing to gain from helping people, who says, I'm not going to wait for the government. I'm not going to wait for somebody else. I have the ability to help these people. Therefore, I will do it. I will do it for no other reason other than it is the right thing to do. And I have a responsibility when I, because I have these abilities to use it to better my community and my fellow man. That's who Superman is, and that's what America is. And they hate that. You think about it, Superman is like the embodiment of everything the left detests. He's extremely masculine. He's strong. He's self-reliant. He is a white heterosexual Protestant, which, you know, they can't stand that either. And he's basically universally beloved on both sides of the aisle. And, I mean, he just embodies all of that spirit of, of do-it-yourself and don't wait on the government and trust people and, um, you know, you do things for others. And, and on top of that, he's a very overtly messianic figure. I mean, there's extremely strong symbolism, and it was intentionally done by his creators, to make him into sort of a Christ-like figure. And, of course, that's the thing they detest the most. And because of that, they have to do one of two things. Either they have to tear him down and make him irrelevant, or they have to shift him into a symbol that is powerful for their side and something that they can use and they can point to. They've chosen to do the latter, but it's not going to work. Because in the public eye, at least the people that actually know Superman, they know who he really is and what he really stands for. These people obviously don't, or they do, and they hate it, and that's why they're trying to destroy it. But ultimately, the left would really much prefer an authoritarian Superman that just makes people do what he wants. They, they would prefer, like, Red Sun version of Superman, or the Justice Lord version of Superman, uh, Ultraman, something to that effect. But Superman used to be universal. He used to be a unifying figure. He used to be something that all Americans could look to and say, like, that's the American ideal. This is a person that his whole goal is to be so good that he inspires goodness in the average person. He, he wants to be inspirational, like a messiah, to other people. And the left just absolutely cannot stand that, and it shows in the way that they are trying to destroy him. They don't want a unifying figure. They want something that is polarizing and that drives conservatives away and upholds their values as the one and only true value. And that's why they don't like the idea that you could unite around the American way. And so this colorist actually hits the nail absolutely on the head. That is the core of the issue. 
the whole gay thing and having a black version of Superman and everything else, those are symptoms of the underlying disease, which is they hate Superman and who he stands for. And so they try to co-opt him for, for their side because they realize if they left him as is, he's actually a very powerful tool for the American side. For those who want to conserve American traditions and values. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, it must mean you like what you saw and should like and subscribe. That or you were just super bored, wound up here by accident, and were too lazy to turn the video off before now. Now, I hope you're the first type of person, but if you happen to be the second type, doesn't really matter to me. I got a view out of you either way. Huh. Profiting off of the laziness of others. This must be what it feels like to be a Democrat.